This week, the age of sun machines is upon us. But first, I'm Quinn Emmett, and this is important, not important. Science for people who give a shit. Hit subscribe right now to get this essay and my conversations with the world's smartest people every single week. You can find the email version or the web version or whatever and links to everything at importantnotimportant.com. You can subscribe there or you can just find it right in your show notes. And now let's talk about our usual topic. How did we get here? The climate change era, the find out follow up to the Anthropocene's fuck around stage, is further along than we'd like to usually admit. But as much as we have so much work left to do, with so much of society and so many industries, economies, housing to replace and build anew, we have also made more progress, more quickly, than you can possibly imagine. The race is on, and seemingly, all of the sudden, the age of sun machines is upon us. And just in time, I told you, it's a race. You're a human alive today, so I don't have to describe how untenably fucking hot it is in the summer, and how much catastrophically warmer winters are, which is actually just as important, if not more. How much drier and wetter it is, how much migration is increasing inside and between countries, how much our staple crops are threatened, and how few heat and employment protections the farm workers who seed and harvest them have. You may all think this is going faster than advertised, and while it is actually not doing that, the feeling is understandable. The power systems that be have lied to you for decades now, the most consequential decades of them all. And yet, even the most astute and incentivized among us drastically underestimated how much ground distributed solar could literally cover in the same stretch of time. From The Economist a little while back, my man Nat Bullard, an energy analyst formerly of Bloomberg Green and recent founder of Halcyon said, In 2009, when installed solar capacity worldwide was 23 gigawatts, the energy experts at the IEA, the International Energy Agency, predicted that in 20 years to 2030, it would increase to 244 gigawatts. It hit that milestone, in fact, in 2016, only six of the 20 years had passed. According to Bullard, an energy analyst, over most of the 2010s, actual solar installations typically beat the IEA's five-year forecasts by 235%. The people who have come closest to predicting what has actually happened have been environmentalists, poo-pooed for zealotry and economic illiteracy, such as those at Greenpeace who, also in 2009, predicted 921 gigawatts of solar capacity by 2030. Yet even that was an underestimate. The world's solar capacity hit 1,419 gigawatts last year. Solar's place in charts of historical energy prices is beginning to look a lot like Katie Ledecky's just laugh out loud LOL run in the 1500 free. It's just unbreakable. It's all solar. And this is all impossibly good news, because now more than ever, the best way to remove emissions from the atmosphere is to stop adding new ones altogether. And the best way to use fewer fossil fuels is to leave them in the fucking ground. That's what solar and wind and nuclear and hydro and geothermal, that's what they do. The more solar we build, the cheaper it gets, and we rely on fossil fuels less and less. We aren't there yet, but we are hurtling towards, again, a literally brighter, more renewable, and maybe even one day drastically more abundant future. In a world where energy poverty is still a thing, and where we still shut off people's water and power, equitable abundance can feel a ways off, but it's also closer than ever. And what's even more incredible is how much more solar would we built if we weren't absolute morons. If residential solar wasn't three times as expensive in the U.S. as in other countries. If our politics and literal and metaphorical power systems allowed for problem solving instead of bribes to make new ones. And if our grid wasn't an overloaded, rickety old wagon trying to fjord a river in the Oregon Trail while Timmy actively succumbs to dysentery. If. And yet, those are all decisions we make. Yet, even despite all of that, some pretty shitty interest rates and pervasive disinformation campaigns against onshore and offshore wind 
our clean electric infrastructure is coming to life all around us. California, still a clusterfuck of self-defeating bureaucracy, saw an immediate future of rolling lethal blackouts in 2018, and they were like, no, and they built so many batteries in less time than I can even process. Conversely, the only bureaucracy that Texas has is wrapped firmly around anybody's available uteri. You want to build a fuck ton of solar and batteries and wind? Have at it. Basically, no permits required. The most recent RMI Clean Energy Report has earned breathless coverage and for good reason. Mostly because we all needed some good news, but also here is the OG Bill McKibben highlighting the clean power and transportation progress since Russia annexed Crimea, which feels like a fucking eternity at this point. He said, solar generation has grown 12 times, battery storage by 180 times, and EV sales by 100 times. This charge has been led by China, where solar generation up 37 times and EV sales up 700 times, and which as a result is poised to be the first major electrostate. An electrostate? Fuck yeah, look at the subsidies they're giving them. It's S-curve time, we are on our way. Hey everyone, it's Quinn, your host and the founder of Important Not Important. Have you ever wondered what the hell forever chemicals actually are? How about ocean acidification or green hydrogen? What about CRISPR or agroforestry? There was a time uh, pretty recently when I had no idea what the hell any of those things were, or many other things. Thankfully, our Basic Shit series is here to quickly get you up to speed. Designed and written by Willow, these bite-sized breakdowns will help you understand the lingo you need to understand and unfuck our rapidly changing world. To learn more, head over to importantnotimportant.com and up at the top, just hit categories and then basic shit. They are free to everyone. You are welcome. Thanks for listening. And as always, thanks for giving a shit. Back to the show. But here's the thing. I said the age of sun machines was upon us, but all this didn't just happen. Again, these are decisions we made. People, companies, and yes, governments of all sizes made it happen and against enormous odds. Replacing our energy system with a new one midstream is a complicated clusterfuck, but we are actually doing it and way faster than anyone ever imagined. But again, none of it's guaranteed. It requires all of us. It requires residential and massive commercial solar. It requires many new transmission lines and progressively slashing fossil fuel subsidies starting Tuesday. There are many consequential elections this year, but the U.S. election in November will matter greatly for all of these. And look, I said the race is on, and it is toe-to-toe. 2,000 kids die every single day from air pollution. On the other hand, the American Climate Corps is finally coming. The great Sun Zia is finally barely coming. Citibank, J.P. Morgan Chase, Satander, Bank of America, and HSBC, among others, they continue to finance oil and gas operations in a drying Amazonia. It's a fucking race. Geothermal is coming, literally down the street from me in Wayman Mary. Greece is shutting down from heat. The road to Mecca is more dangerous than ever. And the New York Times and other papers of record continue to not only run, but help create ads for fossil fuel majors. It's fucking incredible. They're fueling the race. On the other hand, the youth are winning. And Miami's drowning. Car-free city streets are proliferating. Not in New York City. Crops and people can't survive in Indian heat or China's drought. Nuclear is back. Alt meat isn't dead yet. And the nature restoration law may save Europe's forest, but Europe's green political parties are getting crushed. Every new inch of new solar, especially historically cheap renewables that replace coal, oil, gas, and wood, immediately saves lives now and, of course, in the future. So what can you do? So much. (laughs) We didn't get here on accident, again, and we're not going to eradicate energy poverty, much less go full-blown sun gods without you or all of us combined. It's a thousand degrees out everywhere. Running a toe-to-toe race is invigorating. But I would be more like Shikari Richardson, long-heralded 
and long denied, finally back at Olympic trials, stumbling out of the blocks with her shoe untied, and then, despite it all, crushing the field in the 100 meters, going on to the Olympics, getting her silver, winning the fucking relay. Let's just do all the things. It's not going to be easy. Let's do it. Check out some of our vetted, awesome, solar-related action steps below, and let's get to fucking work. Here they are. Number one, donate to Grid Alternatives to advocate for community-powered solar policy that gets everyone on a clean energy grid. And if you want to go global, you can donate right to give directly so people have the agency to buy their own distributed solar. Second, volunteer to become a member of the Green Workers Alliance to help ensure the creation and maintenance of well-paying, sustainable green jobs in the clean energy transition. Third, buy solar for your home, your company, your school district, or your town with help from our best friends at Rewiring America. Fourth, get educated about where your power's coming from with the electricity map. It is addicting. Fifth, be heard about continuing to expand solar access and ask your representative to support clean energy progress. And lastly, invest in positive climate action and use your money to fund solar expansion with Atmos, A-T-M-O-S. That's it for this week. If you've got feedback, questions, or opinions, please send them to us. Questions at importantnotimportant.com. And of course, hit subscribe wherever the hell you're listening to this to get next week's issue straight to your feed. To go deeper, visit importantnotimportant.com. Thank you for giving a shit.